if I told you that you can run faster, recover quicker, get sick less often, reduce your risk of injury, and improve your mental resilience by just doing something that you've done since the day you were born a little bit more often. Sleeping more is often associated with laziness. Teenagers sleeping in till lunchtime and snoozing on the job. But firstly, this is not what I'm suggesting. And secondly, the people that think that sleeping more is lazy have got it all wrong. I feel like sleep has been forgotten about in enhancing performance. It's almost not sexy enough to become the latest performance enhancing trend. And all the popular culture trends at the moment are centering around hydration, nutrition, strength and conditioning, or the latest massage gun. And don't get me wrong, these things are helpful too, but sleep is so primal, and that's the coolest thing, that we all do it anyway, and the factors that determine a good or a bad sleep or sleep routine are things that you can easily impact yourself just by optimizing the conditions that you sleep in and your life routine surrounding both bedtime and wake time. And speaking of optimizing sleep conditions, huge thanks to today's sponsor, Man to Sleep. More on them later on. In this video, I'm gonna talk through the benefits of getting enough quality sleep, both for Joe Bloggs, your next door neighbor, but especially for athletes and runners, as well as the flip side, so the impact of sleep deprivation. Some of which might really surprise you, or it might just be terrifyingly familiar. And stick around until later when I'm going to talk through some tips and absolute bedtime routine game changers which have really changed my sleeping habits and have had a positive impact on my running as a result. So that hopefully you can do something similar to improve your sleep and run faster because of it. Now, I don't want to scare you too much by covering the raft of things that can happen if you don't sleep enough or that are at least linked to poor quality sleep. That would only keep you up at night, which would be counterintuitive. But for a flavour, for the men that are watching this video, sleeping for five hours per night results in smaller testicles compared to sleeping for seven plus hours. And four to five hours of sleep on average can result in testosterone levels similar to men who are 10 years older than you. Got your attention now, haven't I? And I borrowed those stats from sleep scientist Matt Walker, who goes on to flag similar negative reproductive health impacts for women who sleep less as well. So. Check out his TED talk linked below for more terrifying stats like that, but I will warn you, it's pretty morbid. So I'll try my best to park the temptation to flood you with all the negative impacts of not enough sleep because that's not what this video is for. But as I go through the positive impacts of getting a good amount of quality sleep in just a moment, you'll get a good idea of what the negative impacts of not enough sleep are as well because they're just the flip side of the perks of good sleep. And before I get into the good stuff and you go off and tuck yourself into bed, it's important to note that when I say good sleep, I'm talking about a couple of things. Enough sleep, so around that eight hour unbroken magic number or more, and averaging that number consistently with a regular schedule. So what are some of the top benefits of good sleep for everyone, but even more so for runners who are pushing their bodies more than someone who doesn't exercise? Firstly, you'll get sick less often because your immune system is doing its thing whilst you're sleeping, so more sleep and more consistent sleep equals the time that those little sickness-fying cells work in their magic. And in contrast, just one night of four hours sleep or less can reduce your body's immune responses to 50 to 70% less than their normal amount, making the chances of getting sick far greater. And we all know how important not getting sick is to athletes. It is the most frustrating thing when a training block is going well, the body's feeling good, and then you get struck down by the common cold. And I'd be willing to bet that more times than not, a bout of illness is preceded by a few days or maybe even a week of poor sleep. And if this has happened to you, let me know in the comments section below. I'd be interested to hear how common this actually is. The reality is, we're exposed to viruses and other nasties all the time, but our immune system is effectively warding them off. But by not sleeping enough, you're giving those viruses you're exposed to a head start to interrupt your training. In a similar vein, good sleep lowers your risk for serious long-term health problems too, like diabetes, heart disease, and even some cancers, not least by helping you to maintain a healthy weight. Now, obviously, your weight is determined by a lot of things, genetics, energy in versus energy out, but during sleep, the body produces higher levels of leptin, the body's natural appetite suppressants, and lower levels of the appetite stimulant, ghrelin, 
which is why you don't wake up at 2 a.m. wanting your fourth meal of the day. And being a healthy weight is naturally that's something that's helpful when you're a runner because that's gonna mean that you can move efficiently. It's physics. And unsurprisingly, when you consider the fact that when you're asleep, your body is releasing growth hormone and engaging in muscle repair, reducing inflammation and other essential sciencey sounding important things like protein synthesis, good sleep drastically reduces your risk of injury. Multiple studies on both teenage and adult athletes have shown that seven hours or less of sleep is associated with an increased injury risk which when sustained for 14 days, increases that injury risk by 1.7 times. That's almost doubling your risk of injury. So when you hear someone say recovery is key, this is literally the long and short of it. It's like a recovery super zone. It's sleeping to recover those muscles that have been damaged and worked really hard when you've been out training and regenerating that tissue so that you're ready to go again the next day. Moving from physical health then to the mental health benefits. Sleep is widely believed to help with cognitive function memory and emotion regulation. So not only is your brain updating its connections during sleep, which helps you learn new information and form memories, it's processing everything that's happened that day and helping you make sense of it. So good sleep in this instance is helping you maintain focus, make good decisions and learn from your experiences. And again, I cannot downplay the importance of this for athletes because you're learning all the time and mental resilience is just as important as your physical training. For emotion regulation, handling stress and pressure, decision making and race or session strategizing. A lack of sleep can have a negative impact on the ability to think clearly, form memories, learn well and function optimally just during the day. The ability to think quickly slows down after only a week of insufficient sleep. That's going to impact your judgment of both tasks in your sport and outside of it. Perhaps taking more risks, making poor decisions or losing focus of your all important goals. Now your mood is something that's heavily linked to your sleep routine as well. It's why we say someone got out the wrong side of the bed this morning. Sleep restores the body's energy levels, which is why waking up from a good night's sleep feeling well rested has a naturally positive impact on your mood. Sleep deprivation, on the other hand, can lead to irritability as well as some of the most common mental health problems that we experience, depression and anxiety. But the most amazing thing about sleep, and something that sort of blows my mind really when I think about how clever it is and how we just do this natural restorative thing every day as humans, is that if you have depression or anxiety, just developing a consistent sleep routine can be really effective in resolving the symptoms. Anyone who's experienced irritability or symptoms of depression and anxiety can probably tell you that it's not done wonders for their running performance. Though getting out for a run without any pressure on paces or distance and just getting outside for that headspace can be such a positive boost. Good quality sleep has also been shown to improve reaction times, speed, accuracy, and overall athletics performance. Now that's across the board, not just in running. And these are benefits that are there for us, ready for the taking. And they also help if you're just out driving or just reacting to any danger really in everyday life. But at the performance end, these are some of the 1% that we're looking for in order to put together a PB run, lifting heavier than ever before in the gym, or just succeeding in our workout goals. And athletes who get adequate sleep are also found to be better at sustaining intense physical activity. So that's your endurance box ticked off and they're also found to have better coordination which for us is our running form. Now I'm obviously not saying just sleep more and your endurance and speed will improve. You need to do the training too but I am saying even if you do the right training scrimping on sleep might mean that you're not improving in those areas as much as you could do. So how are you going to improve your sleep other than me just telling you really unhelpfully just sleep more. I appreciate that not everyone can just add two hours of sleep per night to make sure they hit those eight or nine hours. Sometimes there are social, family and professional circumstances that just don't allow it. But there are things you can do to optimize the quality and the consistency of the hours that you do get that could mean that you're well on your way. Firstly, you wanna have a good regular sleep routine and make it a habit. So that means going to sleep and waking up at the same time every day, which is shown to be a really key factor for improving the quality of your sleep. And it could sound counterintuitive to those of you who are looking to sleep in and bank an extra couple of hours on a Sunday morning, but consistency and regularity for these sleep and wake times seven days a week is actually much better than staying up and sleeping in at the weekend because that can negatively impact your body's natural sleep-wake rhythm. And if you can, shooting for eight hours in that routine or at 
least more than seven on average across the week can make sure that you're giving the body and the mind all the time it needs to be in that recovery super zone. Make sure your surroundings are optimum for sleep. Practically wise, these are kind of obvious. Try to keep the room super quiet if you're able to, or perhaps use earplugs if you wanna block out any ambient noise. Keep the room relatively cool because warm temperatures are harder to fall asleep in and to stay asleep in. And of course, make the environment dark. Get blackout blinds if you're on a highly lit street or consider using an eye mask or better still, a Manta Sleep eye mask. I've been using this Manta Sleep Mask Pro for the last few weeks in the nighttime and for daytime naps as well with extreme success. It literally transports you to the darkest cave you ever did see or not see rather because it's 100% blackout in here. My favorite thing about this eye mask is that you actually can't feel that you're wearing it. And specifically, I'm talking about the very sensitive skin around your eyes and on your eyelids. I can literally blink with quite long eyelashes I'll have you know and feel nothing. It doesn't touch the mask because of these soft adjustable eye cups which are cleverly c-shaped so that you can still sleep on your side and not feel that the mask is slipping. It's like a bra for your face supporting you to the sleep of dreams. Thank you Manta for this brilliant bit of kit, for supporting the pro nap movement and for sponsoring today's video. Check out their eye masks by following the link in the description below and use code Philly. that's P-H-I-L why at checkout to bag yourself 10% off. Back to the tips. Now, caffeine is often the trickier one here. Lots of runners love their coffee or will use caffeine in specific sessions or in races, but it is a stimulant and it hangs around in your system for a long time. I go for decaf tea or coffee past 1 p.m. to make sure that it's not keeping me up nine hours later. And to be honest, I hardly drink alcohol at all, especially not when I'm in a key block and I've probably had about one glass of wine this year. If you drink socially or it's something you look forward to at meals out or at weekends, Try to cut it down if it's unrealistic for you to cut it out. And whilst alcohol can have that feeling of knocking you out before bed, it actually reduces the quality of your sleep because that depressant effect is being had across those sleep inducing processes that I spoke about earlier and it can make you a lighter sleeper as well. Again, this one will be easier said than done for some, especially if you're doing shift work, but the good news is that exercise in general helps with good sleep, but exercising too late in the day can cause issues with falling asleep because you've sent those endorphins raving around your body and you can't relax. If you can, try to get your runs in earlier in the day to avoid the running induced insomnia. This is one that I will hold my hands up and say, I'm not there with this yet. Avoiding screens before bedtime around 30 minutes to an hour before you want to hit the pillow can make it easier to fall asleep. We've all heard about the blue light that our phones, computers and tablets emit, which messes with the body's natural production of melatonin, which tells us it's daytime. Something I have implemented though, as a way to both force me to put my phone down, but also to get relaxed before bed, is developing a better bedtime routine. My new bedtime routine centers around one piece of advice that I actually got from my massage therapist, which was to have a warm bath before bed, followed by some dynamic movements and some stretching. And this was predominantly in an attempt to improve recovery by just gently moving the body after being in a sitting position for a good portion of the later day. But I found it to be so beneficial in preparing me to sleep. I probably do this five or six nights each week now. Get into the bath around 8.30 or 9 p.m. I know it's time for winding down and I'm more likely to put my phone away and just soak in the darkness for a while. Reading also is meant to be really good before bed as a good alternative to the perpetual scrolling that we can often do. So try a few things out, see what helps you relax and then see how many days in a row you can do it. Make it a habit. Treat your sleep as you do anything else that determines your health and training quality with the same consistency and rigor you can reap the benefits because you can't get ahead in life or in training by just staying up for longer, working away and cutting the sleep. All the research shows that this will come back to bite you and in reality, it's gonna have the opposite effect and cut your progress short, both in your general health, but also in your athletic endeavors. Let me know if you found any game-changing sleep hacks recently that I haven't covered and if you're interested in tapping into other ways to boost your running performance and to reduce injury, check out this video that covers easy and simple runners strength and conditioning exercises that you can do at home in just 10 minutes. That was a grind.